Hey everybody, let's welcome the captains from the top four teams heading into the finals tomorrow of the Live Golf Dallas Team Championship. We are joined by the captain of Ripper GC, Cam Smith, who bested Fireballs GC today. We are joined by Tyrrell Hatton from Legion 13, who bested High Flyers GC today. We are joined by Dustin Johnson, the captain of Four Aces GC, who bested Stinger GC today. And the captain of Ironheads GC, Kevin Na, who had a clean sweep over the Crushers today. So many questions for you guys. I'm going to start with you, Kevin. Did you guys ever think, heading into it this week, that you guys would knock out Smash and then the top-seeded team coming in as the lowest-seeded team in a clean sweep today? Like I said all week, a match play, anything can happen. Um, I felt like yesterday, getting through yesterday, coming in this week, I think we had some momentum. Guys were confident going into today and changed up the, the pairing today, and um, I think the strategy worked. DJ, you guys had a, a tough win out there today. Uh, you ended up winning your match against Dean, one up, and Reed won his against Grace, one up. Can you just tell us a little bit about the fight out there today and the fight that the Stingers put up? Yeah, I mean, we knew it was going to be a tough match. Uh, you know, the Stingers, they're a really good team. Um, I've, I liked the, the matchups we had, but, I mean, even Pat and Harold, who, I mean, they got beat by Louie and Charles, but I think they were, they were four or five under alternate shot and lost three and two. I mean, it was... You know, they played really well. Obviously, uh, you know, me and Pat both won our matches. But, yeah, we knew it was going to be a tough day. Conditions were tough today. And, um, yeah, I'm really proud of the guys. You guys were another team that was on a lower seed heading in, and now you guys are heading into the finals tomorrow. What does that say about the resilience of the four aces? Yeah, I mean, this year we struggled a little bit, but I feel like everybody's playing well now. And, obviously, we got a lot of confidence going in tomorrow. And, you know, anything can happen. And Tyrrell, uh, have you had a chance to talk to Cap yet? Um, I've, we exchanged a few messages um, probably 10 minutes ago. So he's, he sounds like he's doing a little bit better, which is good to hear. But um, it was good for the team to win today. I think whenever you're choosing a team to play, you almost give that team a little bit of an added incentive to go out there and, and win. Um, but yeah, it was nice for us to, to do our jobs and, and give ourselves a chance going into tomorrow. I mean, how exciting was it to watch, you know, 20 year old Caleb Surratt, Kieran Vincent go out and just absolutely dominate the match between Phil Mickelson and Brendan Steele. You guys must be so proud of them, the performance they put on today. Yeah, they've done well today. Um, obviously, I, I was keeping an eye on the scoreboard to see what was happening in in the other two matches. And yeah, they got off to a nice start. I think looking at the how they actually scored as well they didn't really give many holes away so that's key in match play and um especially in foursome so yeah they've done a they've done a great job today and um i'm sure they'll take some confidence from that into tomorrow and you dominated your match today as well against andy ogletree and then when you were done you went out to go watch your teammate sub and teammate john catlin perform are you liking taking on this role of captain this week while john's sick i mean it, I would have done the same thing if if it was um, Rambo out there. So, I, yeah, as a team, I think you kind of, if the guys are still out there playing, I think it's important, captain or not, you go out and support the guys. So, um, obviously, sorry I delayed your, your press conference. I didn't realize that there, there wouldn't be a half point and they have to carry on playing. So, um, I guess you say you brought me into the air con a bit sooner than I expected. <laughs> And Cam, congratulations. The Rippers won against the Fireballs. Uh, Leash won his, um, his match. Herbie won his match. You had a tough day out there against Garcia and Answer. Can you tell us a little bit about the day? Yeah, I mean, uh, the other two matches, actually, Herbie and Leash's match, uh, you know, started off the, the wrong way. Um, and we started off really hot, and we were feeling pretty good, to be honest. But, um, you know, Sergio and A played some pretty solid golf, and just weren't able to put ourselves in, in the right position out there to, to get our match done, and um, particularly on those scoring holes. I feel like there's there's only a couple around here where you can really kind of dial in and try and make a birdie, so we didn't do that well today, but um, nonetheless, we played some pretty good golf as well, and then uh, Leash and Herbie just, you know, really showed what type of player they are coming down the stretch. You know, they dig deep, and um, it's nice to, to know that 
guys will do that to, to your team and, and their team. So, um, yeah, I was happy I had them two out there. How much leaderboard watching are you guys doing while you guys are out there? There's a lot going on, obviously, DJ. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of leaderboard. So every time you see one, you're looking at it to see what's going on, um, you know, to see how the guys are doing. And Kevin, how was that for you, watching your guys just dominate? I was watching it much as I can. Um, we, the nice thing was everybody was kind of never really behind, uh, which was a bit of a relief. But um, I, I was definitely watching. And so tomorrow, obviously, is uh, stroke play, all four scores count, totally different format. I know a lot of teams have had momentum, but tomorrow is a totally different ball game. Cam, can you just talk a little bit about that and what we can expect out of guys tomorrow, maybe that had been performing great in match play and what might change for them tomorrow? Yeah, I think, um, I think we've played well on Sundays when all four scores have counted all year. So um, there's no reason that we can't go out there um, tomorrow and do the same thing. I think it's... Uh, it's a hard test out there. It's easy to get behind the eight ball and uh, probably a lot of patience and um, a lot of kind of resilience out there tomorrow given the conditions. And Tyrrell, I know this is your first time at a team championship out here and you guys have the chance to take it all. You don't have cap here. Do you have any like extra nerves as you're on that first tee tomorrow heading out there knowing what's at stake for your team? Uh, to be honest, no. It's kind of, you just have to treat it like a, another Sunday and... Um, yeah, just go out there and, and try your best. Um, it's going to be quite an exciting finish, as you said, with all four scores counting. And um, I think the course will probably play a little bit different to how it did today. Being set up for match play, I think there was a few more tees forward than what we'll probably face tomorrow. Um, but it was nice for, for us to get out on the golf course today. So yesterday was a fairly boring day, uh, especially when you've been here since Tuesday. You kind of want to get started. So... Um, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to tomorrow. And DJ, are you hoping tomorrow is your four aces chance at redemption to get back up on that team championship podium? Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's only four teams that have a chance, so why, why not? Um, you know, obviously, all four scores count, and everyone's going to have to play well if we want to win. Awesome. I'll kick it over to Mike. Kevin, what does it feel like to be Cinderella? Feels pretty damn good. <laughs> um, I'm really proud of my boys. Um, they fought hard. Um, they needed to, when they needed to, they were there and get the job done. Um, it's a great feeling. I think um, some confidence boost in the last two days going into Sunday. So I'm telling my boys, anything can happen. So you, you guys have struggled for results really ever since Liv started. What does it mean? just to get to the finals and what would it mean to actually win it tomorrow it would be huge um yeah we've i've been batting quite a bit with Liv, trying to better my team um i think we're te our team's getting better um, um some of the guys are a bit young players as in as a world stage but they're only getting better as every week we play and the experience that they're building and the confidence that they're building um but in the last few years, um, the friendship I've built with my teammates has been incredible, and it's something that I think we'll be friends for the rest of our lives. And Terrell, can you just kind of walk us through when you found out that John wasn't playing and also how the team processed it before the start of play today? Uh, well, I mean, when I woke up this morning, I was under the impression that John would be playing today. Um, arriving to the golf course and and see, seeing him, it was apparent that he was he just wasn't going to be up to it, which is unfortunate. Um, I think we all kind of wish him well and want him to to get back healthy as soon as possible. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it would it would have been nice to have him playing today. He's a he's a pretty special player and. Um, but ultimately, we, we kind of, that aside, we still have to go out there and give it our best. And thankfully, we were able to advance as well. And just the performance of your foursomes team, has, that was quite a win for them. Yeah, they, looking at the, looking at the scores, they, they played really well. And um, they didn't really give too much away. And that's, that's key in match play, especially in foursomes. So, yeah, the guys, guys have done very well.
Cam, can you kind of walk us through your decision to play foursomes and did you feel like it was a bit of a risky move or was it pretty easy to make that decision? Um, no, I don't think it was risky. I think, you know, Herbie's uh, played some great golf here the last, uh, you know, couple of months out here. His results have been, you know, kind of top five, top ten, one after the other, and he's been really consistent. So, um, and Leash has been playing really solid too. Um, myself, I've been playing really solid. So I feel like it was really a matter of um, what matchup work worked best really out there, and um, the fact that Jonesy and I play the same ball. Um, was probably a really big factor. I mean, uh, Leash and Herbie play two completely different balls. Um, and if I was out there wanting to, you know, and I had to hit a shot that really mattered, um, I wanted to be hitting my ball. And um, that was really the what it come down to. I feel like Jonesy and I have very similar games um, and we play the same ball. So it was really, um, really a no-brainer for us, although probably from the outside looked like a bit of, bit of a skew if decision. And DJ, obviously, it didn't go the way we expected it to for the four aces this year. But if you win tomorrow, does any of the previous season matter? No, I mean, obviously, we, you know, didn't have the best year. Um, you know, we were we were in position going into the last day quite a lot um, this year. Just, you know, Sunday, we didn't, you know, just all four didn't play well at the same time. But Obviously, we got a chance to redeem ourselves tomorrow, and you know, if we all four play well and we win, we win the the whole title. Then, yeah, kind of, kind of forget about the rest of the year. Okay, over there, guys. Chidale, I want to ask you uh, to step into the shoes of a young uh, Caleb Surat uh, and imagine: uh, is this sort of a different and more conducive platform for somebody uh, that young to develop? Uh, relative to being on a on a tour where you're fighting for your card every every week and has no one else to kind of lean your lean lean on. So I, I'm struggling to hear. I'm you sorry. Like. I'm sorry. So I was, I was trying to ask if you can step into the shoes of Caleb Surat or any other young golfer who might come into live, yeah. right, and have the kind of support structures that exist uh, in this setting, uh, relative to a regular tour where you are lone wolf. You think this is a better sort of format or a, or, a, or a league to develop your skills and emerge as a golfer? I would say it's probably a, a nicer environment in a sense that you can maybe lean on other guys that are more experienced. Whereas if you're a young lad playing um, on the PGA Tour or DP World Tour and you don't know many guys out there, then it can feel more... I'd say it'd feel more lonely and you're kind of figuring out a little bit more yourself um, in this environment in, as part of your team. So asking questions and, and things like that is absolutely fine and kind of part of learning. And I guess, you know, Caleb would look to John more so with John's experience of winning more tournaments and things like that. So, um, yeah, I'd, I'd say that it's a pretty good environment to to learn how to play professional golf. Can you maybe uh, give a couple of examples of how that might help the development of a golfer? Um, huh? I thought I just gave a pretty good answer there. Um, I'm wondering like, what more you need from that. Cam, do you have anything to add about just this environment for young golfers that are starting out? Yeah, I think there's, I think there's a certain amount of uh, learning you have to do by yourself. Um, but I think being a professional golfer is far different, especially, especially a good professional golfer is far different to, to being an exceptional amateur. And um, there are certain, I guess, tricks of the trade that you can really lean on guys and, and get stuff off of. You know, it can be as simple as where to tee up the ball on the, on the tee box, uh, stuff like that, um, that really just goes through, um, you know, probably elite amateurs' heads like it's nothing, but it really does make a difference, particularly over four days. So there's there's a ton of stuff, just little stuff. I mean, they know how to hit the ball, they know how to chip, they know how to putt. That's the reason they're here. But, um, you know, the key to being an elite professional golfer is, um, is learning. 
Joy. Hi. Uh, uh, my first question is to Kevin. Kevin, uh, what was the rationale behind changing the lineup with you getting into the foursomes with the uh, the two of the strongest putters on the probably on the on the league getting together for the foursomes? Yeah, I I felt like yesterday when I was watching um, the alternate shot uh, and hoping the guys would turn it around and win. I said, just if we survive today, I was thinking I, I would change the lineup, that Jeannie and I would go out as an alternate shot and I, we, we would be pretty strong. And as, Danny, as well as Danny has been playing and the momentum that he's been on and the confidence he's got with the putter right now, I wanted to put him against in singles again. And Scott Vincent being a long hitter out here, he's sneaky long and I felt like that was a better play and it worked out. And everyone knows GD and you are very good putters, but, but the way Danny and Scott Vincent putted today was like as if they just had one club in their bag and they were just beating the crushes. How good was that? It's great. I mean, to watch the leaderboard and have them kind of have control of their match uh, throughout the whole day, it was uh, a bit of of confidence for us, for Jeannie and I. Um, and Danny's been working extremely hard on his putting. Um, and he, he's starting to feel more comfortable over the ball. Um, and then Scott Benson as well, he, he's, he works extremely hard. And he's, I know he's had a tough year um, and he hasn't been too happy with his game. But in the last few tournaments, I saw that it was coming around and his hard work is starting to pay off. And Cam, if I can ask you, uh, there, was, there must have been some nervousness towards the end uh, when both the matches, actually the fireballs, young guys were leading and they made mistakes uh, coming down the stretch. Uh, can you just tell us what were the emotions you guys were going through and, uh, and what it says about match play golf that it can just turn around? Yeah, both? it's, um, you know, after Jonesy and I got beat there on, uh, on 15, um, I knew it was going to have to be a really big effort from the other two guys, given their position in the uh, in the matches. Um, and I feel like, you know, there's not too many guys that I'd rather have out there, to be honest, in the world than those two guys. I think, you know, Herbie, when when stuff's not going his way or, or the team's way, he, he really steps up and, um, you know, grows an extra leg and really pulls something out of the hat every week. Um, we call him the gladiator because um, it's just his personality. He just he always seems to come through and and then leash there on the last hole. I mean, um, I must I must admit I was pretty calm, but um, I know the people around me were very nervous. Um, I, I had a feeling he could get it done. Hey, anyone else before we close it? Last call. Okay. Hopefully we'll see. You guys back here tomorrow, good luck. We're looking forward to it. Have a great round.